Hi guys! Welcome back to another video. So I thought it was about time that I started talking about actual ballet stuff that would be useful for you guys. And it so happens that my point shoes are dead and dying. They're like this, this close to dying. So I thought that I would share with you guys today um, how I sew and prepare my point shoes. Now, if you didn't know, I wear Gaynor Mindens. So while this might be specific to any of you out there who wear Gaynor Mindens as well, um, there are some tips and tricks in here that you can use for traditional point shoes. And before I get started, please, please, please subscribe. I don't know where the subscribe button is, but please click it. There's a quite a few fun stuff coming down the line, both ballet and fitness related, and just a few kind of fun bits here and there. So please subscribe and let's get started. Okay guys, so this is what you're going to need in order to sew and prep your point shoes. Obviously you're going to need your point shoes, but also you need whatever extras you would wear in a normal class, including ouch pouches, toe spaces, whatever. You need elastic, any ribbons, I use a TLC ribbon by Gaynor Minden. You need yarn and thread. You also need a darning needle or what I use is a tapestry needle, which is basically just a curved um, darning needle. Scissors, a lighter and I'll explain why later, a pen or a pencil, and finally an awl, not an owl, an A-W-L-E, which is basically a tool that people use in order to poke holes in leather. Okay, so now that we've got everything we need, let's get started. The first thing you want to do is you want to try on your point shoes with whatever extras you would wear in a normal class, just so you can adjust the drawstring to fit your shoe. You don't want it to be too tight, but you don't want it to be too loose either, otherwise it will slip off your foot. You want to make sure you can just about fit one finger in the back heel of your shoe. Once you've got the exact fit and you've tied your drawstring, make sure you cut it, but don't cut too much in case you need to change it later. And don't throw away your drawstring just yet because we can use this later when we are darning the tip of our point shoes. Now the first thing I like to do is I like to darn my point shoes. Now darning point shoes can be a pain in itself, more so for gainer minions because obviously they're made of plastic. But what I like to do is I like to take my awl and I like to pre-poke holes into the platform of my point shoes and because the awl is very sharp it's much easier for me to go through the shoe than if I try to do it with a darning needle by itself. Now it is very sharp so be very careful when you're using this. If you are a young dancer I would recommend you ask your parents for help on this. So just make holes in even sections around the base of your point shoe like this. Next, take your tapestry needle and the yarn and just thread it through and tie a knot at the end of it. Does anyone else take forever to thread needles or is it just me? So we're going to take the threaded needle and we're going to start darning our point shoes. Now the stitch that I use is something called a chain stitch. Um, it's really hard for me to explain how to do it on video. You can take a look and see how I'm doing it but I think the easiest way is if you just google uh, chain stitch and learn how to do it in detail there. Now, once you've done your first chain stitch, before you close the loop, take the excess drawstring that you've cut off beforehand and just thread it through the loop and then close it. And the reason why you want to do this is because the drawstring helps you start the darning around the edge. It gives it a little extra height and also it gives it a little extra body. Now I like to make sure that the knot is on the side of the point shoe where the little toe is just because that side is going to be naturally a bit thicker so you want to make sure that you're pushing all your weight onto the big toe. Um, don't worry if it looks messy the first time around, generally it looks like a hot mess the first loop round. But once you go around the second time it looks so much better. And of course if you practice it'll look much neater. I like to do at least two layers when I'm darning my point shoes. Most of the time I do three. And actually, fun fact guys, since one of my legs is longer than the other, I like to do an extra layer around the shorter leg just so it helps even it out a bit. Okay, so now it's time to sew your elastics on. You want to start your elastic so that it's about two fingers width away from the midline of your back heel. Now depending on your type of foot, one loop of elastic might be enough for you but for me, I like to do two layers of elastic in a crisscross pattern. I stop my elastic and where my arch hits my point shoe. Um, so measure and mark out your elastic based on the guides that I gave you 
and just start sewing and guys when you're sewing your elastics on your point shoes make sure you're not sewing over your drawstring you want to sew under where the drawstring ends and this is because your foot actually changes size when you are dancing and you want to make sure that the drawstring can still move in order to accommodate that i just use a simple chain stitch um, nothing too complicated just make sure that it's nice and secure and some people like to sew their elastics outside I'm not sure why really, but I prefer to sew mine inside just because it looks neater. Moving on to ribbons. You want to sew your ribbons so that they are in the midpoint of your point shoe, kind of where your arch um, sits. And guys, a good guide if you are using the TLC ribbons or any kind of ribbons with elastic built into them is you want to make sure that the elastic hits the back of your ankle where your Achilles tendon is. Again like with the elastics make sure you're not sewing over the drawstring sew under them. And you can see with the stitches I like to make the stitches a bit wider simply because ribbon tends to fray a bit so I like to make sure that I use wide stitches in order to kind of stop it from fraying to pieces. So once you finish sewing on your ribbons try on your point shoes again with everything just so you can determine where you need to cut the ribbon. Now a good rule of thumb is you want to make sure you have enough ribbon so you can go around the ankle at least once. You don't need to go around your ankle too many times, once is enough. But make sure you have enough ribbon left so that you can tuck your ribbons neatly under the loop. And where you tie the knot should be in a little hollow just below your inner ankle bone. And here's a quick ballet hack for you. If you're worried about fraying ribbons, just simply take a lighter and then just very lightly and carefully just kind of put it under the ribbon. This will help it melt and stop it from fraying. Again guys, ask your parents for help if you have never used a lighter before. And once you're done, just cut off any excess threads and put all the finishing touches on your brand new point shoes. So guys, there you have it. That is how I sew and prepare my point shoes. Now, obviously what works for me might not work for you. Everybody has different types of feet. Everybody has different preferences. Everybody's at different stages of their training. So I really encourage you to experiment and see what works for you. And obviously your feet will change throughout your entire life. What works for you now might not work later. And what doesn't work for you now might work later. If you have any questions about point shoes or ballet in general, you can leave it in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. If you like this video and want to see more, please subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys later. Bye!